Hello, as is becoming somewhat usual, it's been a while since my last video. I think in the last three months I've done five-ish videos. Anyway, this video in particular is a bit special because it's an announcement for a contest we're doing on my Discord server. We often do automation contests there, but I rarely announce them because, well, to be honest, I'm usually too lazy to make an example car for them. This time, however, I was not partially because I started making it before we came up with the contest. And so that's what this video is for. I'll explain more as we go along, but if you're interested, you can check the link in the description. Also, for this video, I'm trying a new microphone out. I would really like feedback on it, because I'm not entirely sure if it makes my voice sound, well, even flatter than it normally is. I also have to be very careful about how close I am to the microphone. You'll see very much wavering volume levels throughout this video, so I'll apologize for that in advance. I'm not going to be able to fix it entirely with editing. Anyway, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, and probably with some horror, what I'm making in this video is decidedly not normal. It's a drag car, but it's definitely not one that conforms to any real regulations. It was originally a supercar, however, I've moved the engine to the front for well, mostly because it looks cool, and then I've moved the front axle to compensate for that. I'll be cutting the entire front end off, and so this will be a very weird-looking dragster indeed. With no front bodywork, I need to put a little bit of effort in to make the car look mechanically sound, and so I'm going to start with the firewall. Designing a firewall is easier said than done, though, and it takes me a few attempts before I get something that I'm happy with. Between attempts at the firewall, which will look much better than this in the end, I do some other things, such as changing the material of the tires. Drag racing slicks are, well, slick, so I want to get rid of the tire tread. I also get started on what is unfortunately only the second most difficult thing I'll do for this build, a fully custom chassis. I'm basing the chassis and roll cage of this car off of pictures I've found of real drag cars. Keep in mind though that that doesn't necessarily mean this will be particularly realistic. I don't really know what I'm doing. To make a long story short, I work on the roll cage for a very, very long time, constantly tweaking things to make them line up better. It should be noted, of course, for the contest you won't have to go anywhere near this level of detail. I've already surpassed what you'll need to do, and really it's going to get a whole lot worse from here. I don't like automation's default suspension very much, so, like everything else on this car, I'm making my own. Now, whenever I play auto, I always seem to end up doing more work than I had initially planned on. That's very much the case for this build, because I have started a custom engine, and I will now continue to work on it for about half a month. 
This combined with my usual reluctance to do any voice commentary is why my videos take so long to make now. While I work on several things that won't actually be included in the final engine build, such as this exhaust, I think it's as good a time as any to talk about the contest. Now, in this contest, although your cars will be scored based on beam performance, there are actually no restrictions as to what you can do to your car. The reason for this is that we think it's probably going to balance out in the end anyway. If you have too much power, it'll just reduce your traction. The way we're going to score your cars is not set in stone yet, because it depends on how many entries we get. However, in theory, we're going to do something like a bracket system. For each bracket, each car will only get one run, so it's important to have a car that's easy to drive. Otherwise, we'll just have to drive very slowly. Though it's impossible to show in the video, the custom engine head covers that I made were extremely difficult to do. Two of the corners had to be both rounded and slanted, and I eventually found a way to do that with roll cage pieces. At this point, the editing will start to speed up a little bit. There's a lot of detail on this car, and I spent many, many hours making it. And I think that it's more important to have a short and easy to watch video than one that actually shows you everything I did. The engine you've been watching taking shape is based mostly off of a top fuel dragster engine. However, it's not entirely based on one. For one thing, it's going to be turbocharged as well as supercharged. This is, to be honest, mostly because I don't want to figure out how to make an engine blower in automation. After cheating at the engine belts a little bit and adding some sneaky branding, in and E stands for no-name engines, I move on to something that is going to take more time than any other single part of the engine. You see, I have made the fundamental mistake of trying to give my dragster magnetos. It's kind of difficult to explain what they do because I'm extremely bad at researching. However, essentially they work like distributors and alternators and starter motors, I think. However, unfortunately they require a lot of wiring and being me, I decided to do that wiring. It took me a day and a half. I've done wiring like this before for a flamethrower on my old Mad Max truck, however I've never done quite this much of it and it is extremely painful to do. I don't even know for sure that this is the way the wires should go. I worked off of a number of example photos, however, they're very hard to see, and well, I have zero mechanical knowledge of drag cars. The turbos were another big sticking point on this build, because at the time I started it, there was no good turbocharger mod. Thankfully, one came out, and so it made life a lot easier when I finally got around to them. The thing that made this mod so useful for me is that the compressor and turbine are placed independently of each other. This means that I can rotate them in different directions, which makes the piping for the exhaust and the intake much easier. Once the engine is finally done, I do a few small details, such as window outlines, before moving on to a very lazy rear suspension. Like with the engine, I don't really care if it's 100% accurate to real suspension. All I care about is whether it looks good enough for the average layperson like myself. Then, after considerable experimentation, I move on to a livery.
With the basic livery done, and I never do anything more detailed anyway, I move on to the driver name, a YouTube logo, and then some sponsors. Because of how the sponsors work, I have to place them twice, once on each side. This is so that they won't be flipped around on the other side. Most of the colors of the livery are just paint zones on the car, however, with a bit of struggle with Otto's shading, I managed to do a bit of patchwork as well. I also patch up the last of the body lines. Like the body on a funny car, I imagine it being one piece that simply lifts off the car for the driver to get in. I had just a few more sponsors, and then, finally, we move on to the last part of the build. Yes, the car of course needs an interior, which is why I'm making sure that all the sponsors on the windows are visible from inside, and so that's the last thing that I need to do to complete the car. Having worked on this car for a long time now, I've gotten to where I'm not really putting a ton of effort into minor details anymore. For instance, the transmission, seat, and steering wheel are all completely pre-made. There's this weird butterfly-shaped control thing that I never was quite happy with when I built it. The comments on my last drag car video tells me that it's for changing the delay time on the trans brake. I add a few final details, and then finally it's time to take some photos and get the car in beam. Unfortunately, none of Otto's photo scenes really work for a drag car, so the many photos I took are all in this studio. I wish there was more interesting scenery, however, the backdrop prop that this game used to have has disappeared for me, so I cannot fake it. I also had a bit of trouble making the beam segment for this car, as there's not really much to do with a drag car other than do a run on a drag strip, so I made a short cinematic thing before I actually show a real run. As it turns out, this drag car is far faster than my old one. It is in fact so fast that it finishes a quarter mile before I finish this sentence. Now, I know the game disqualifies me here like I had jump-started, however, it does that even when I'm very obviously after the green light, so I don't think that can really be trusted. If you think you can beat that time and your car does so while we're testing it, there will be a bonus point in it for you. For now though, that's about it. Thanks for watching, join the contest if you're interested, and goodbye.